Harry's wife. A less than royal narcissist, part 56.2. Now to Fox News. The headline, Harry's wife, Prince Harry, face calls to give up royal titles following podcast appearance. Report. Palace aides are reportedly calling on Harry's wife and Prince Harry to give up their remaining royal titles following the Duke of Sussex's recent podcast appearance. Harry appeared on the most recent episode of Dak Shepherd and Monica Padman's Armchair Expert podcast, where he sat for a freewheeling discussion about his upbringing in the privileged environment of the royal family, liking it to being on The Truman Show, a zoo, and noting the pain and suffering his father, Prince Charles, put him through. The openness of the discussion, coupled with the fact that the episode came just a month after Harry went to the United Kingdom to pay his respects to his late grandfather, Prince Philip, has reportedly left several palace aides perplexed as to why Harry hasn't fully relinquished his royal titles. People are appalled that he could do this to the Queen when the Duke of Edinburgh is barely in his grave, said one aide. To drag his grandfather into this is so shocking and disrespectful, one senior courtier reportedly told the Daily Mail. The Duke of Sussex has now spent a significant amount of time emphasising that he's no different to anyone else and attacking the institution which he says has caused him so much pain. There is a growing feeling that if you dislike the institution that much, you shouldn't have the titles, they added. Harry spoke about mental health during the podcast and wasn't afraid to get personal and discuss how his own upbringing shaped his view of the world. He treated me the way he was treated, the Duke of Sussex said, of his father on the episode. It has long been rumoured that his father, Prince Charles, had somewhat of a rough relationship with his own parents, Queen Elizabeth II and the late Prince Philip. Harry said that the relationship had been strained for years, and he began to consider leaving the royal lifestyle behind in his early twenties. The comet nixed the idea that his wife was the motivation for him to leave the family. It's a lot of genetic pain and suffering that gets passed on anyway, he said, so we as parents should be doing the most we can to try and say, you know what, that happened to me, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen to you. While the armchair expert episode may have been the last straw for many, it's hardly the first time the Duke of Sussex has been complicit in seemingly bad-mouthing the royal family. Both he and his wife made headlines in March when they sat down for a tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey that included accusing the royal household of racism. Now, of course, Prince Harry is perfectly entitled to express his opinion. However, what we see here is the rampant hypocrisy of both he and his wife in this behaviour, and he is being puppeted, utilised as a mouthpiece, what has happened is, and this is clearly evidenced by his comment in the bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview, that he talked about how his wife had made him realise that he was the one that was trapped, he has completely bought in to the idea that his family is toxic. Now, there is no doubt that there is toxicity within the royal family, there are numerous narcissists that operate within there, as I've mentioned previously. However, as I have also explained, the existence of certain behaviours will be utilised by a narcissist through the application of the truth, the half-truth and nowhere near the truth, do listen to that video, in order to assert control. So Harry's wife, as a consequence of her near-always-present need to control Prince Harry, has taken various aspects of his past, for instance, the treatment of his mother, the loss of his mother, and demonstrating to him that he has been trapped within an organisation. And therefore, where Harry, rightly or wrongly, has felt that he's been trapped, or where he has felt that perhaps he has not been treated in the way that he ought to have been done, his wife has capitalised on that. 
She hasn't done so through any genuine compassion for him. She has none, because, after all, being a narcissist, there is no emotional empathy there. And instead, what she has done, instinctively, because her narcissism has seized upon these facets of Harry's life, and to use them against him as means to control him, by causing him to believe that she has his best interests at heart, to cause him to believe that what has happened to him is something which has occurred and that it's time for him now to speak out about it. This serves a purpose on, a num on numerous fronts. First of all, it enables the narcissist to assert control over Harry. It also allows the bolstering of the facade by demonstrating, look, we care about mental health, we care about people's feelings and upbringing, and here's an example in terms of how I've lived my life. And all of this has been explained to him, causing him to, in effect, see the light. This is not uncommon. There are instances, for, for example, where you will get certain therapists who are narcissists that will encourage the victim to believe that they have suffered some kind of abuse within their own family for the purposes of bolstering the reputation of the therapist, enabling the therapist to assert control over the patient, causing that individual to then embark upon a course of action of making false accusations against family members through false memory of purported abuse. Many therapists, of course, do a very good job for their clients and for their patients, helping them deal with difficult situations. But many within that group, or rather a section within that group, are indeed narcissists. And I know from my listeners, my readers, and those that I have consulted with, they have explained to me circumstances where they have suffered as a consequence of inappropriate behaviour towards them by a therapist or by a doctor of some sort, and they have suspected that they were dealing with a narcissist. There are instances where the vulnerabilities of an individual will be utilised by a narcissist against them. This can just be in a standard romantic relationship. You tell the narcissist, for instance, that you're frightened of the dark. The narcissism logs that, and that where it's an aware narcissist, there is a calculated use of that at a later juncture, and an aware narcissist goes into the box of tricks and the narcissism plucks it out at a later juncture to use it against the victim as a means of control through devaluing behaviour. If you convey to the narcissist that you were abused as a child, that will be used against, used against you in two ways. The narcissist may well be, to begin with, understanding and supportive, exhibiting false cognitive empathy. That must have been so terrible, being supportive and understanding to make you believe that you're dealing with a compassionate and empathic individual. And then, of course, it will be used against you in some shape or form during your devaluation, either as a corrective devaluation if you're a secondary source to the narcissist or the sustained devaluation where you're the intimate partner primary source. It is common and frequent for us to use a vulnerability against the, narciss against the victim rather for the purposes of the assertion of control. Whether it's the fact that you're scared of spiders or snakes or the dark, that you've suffered some form of abuse, that you've come from a difficult family background, that you've had difficulties dealing with perhaps prejudice in terms of your sexual orientation or your race. These factors are utilised by the narcissist, both in terms of appearing to be supportive, if it's that particular type of narcissist, mid-range, greater or ultra, and thereafter across the whole range of narcissists to throw it back in your face, in effect, to use it against you. It is also used as a means to control by saying, talk about it. Stay away from those people. You've suffered by their hand. I'll look after you. Don't do anything more with them. And that allows the narcissist to not only assert control over that primary victim by virtue of appearing to care for them, but also triangulate that victim with friends and family to say they have abused you or they simply haven't supported you when you've been suffering difficult times. And it drives a wedge between that primary victim and other individuals within the family and friend group of that victim, making it easier for the narcissist to assert control. 
So again, this is what we've been seeing, that these revelations that Prince Harry has been making, uh, whether they're accurate or not, is essentially irrelevant with regard to the issue of what's happening. They are being used by Harry's wife to control him, both in terms of the interaction between her and him, but then also to utilise him in a capacity as a lieutenant to allow him to speak about them. This, of course, bolsters the facade. It leverages opportunity for the residual benefit of money. For instance, the creations I mentioned in the first part about the various uh, programme about the mental health issues. It allows control to be asserted indirectly by, in effect, smearing the other individuals or within Harry's family. It also, of course, demonstrates the hypocrisy, which is, we're perfectly content to keep using our titles, but we're going to keep turning around and slamming you for the way that he has been treated, either allegedly or indeed has been treated. Of course, such hypocrisy goes unnoticed. Firstly, by Prince Harry, because he's caught in the fog of his emotional thinking and the grip of his handler, and secondly, by Harry's wife, she, don't, she does not see it because the narcissism will not allow her to see that hypocrisy. If you were to put it to her, for instance, do you not think that it's wrong that you continue to use your title for the purposes of status and cutting money deals when you are pouring scorn on the institution? You'll be met with explanations such as, we're not. Uh, these are our titles, but it's actually us that matter. Um, that's who they're contracting with. It's our story. Nothing to do with the fact with the royals, of course. That's at a bunkum. Nobody would be interested in this two, in these two, if they didn't have the titles. They've nothing meaningful to say. She's a vapid individual that utilizes whatever she finds around her and passes it off as her own through character trait acquisition, and Prince Harry is not a particularly bright individual. And therefore, were it not for the fact of the status and titles that they have, these deals would not be cut. But, again, the narcissism doesn't let that get in the way. And if you were to say, look, you're being a hypocrite, that is a threat to control. And therefore, the narcissism steps in by saying, direct threat to control, this must now be nullified. Issue a denial. No, that's not the case. Or deflect in some way. It might be to say, well, we've earned all of this. Indeed, after all the hardship he's been put through, isn't it about time that he got some benefit from his title rather than all the hardships? In a sense, triangulation with that and a pity play. The fact is that most people viewing this would say, fair enough, if you want to take these side uh, swipes at the royal family and deal with the fallout with regard to how that impacts upon your relationships with your family, that's a matter for you. It's a rather unedifying experience to do it in public in the manner that you're doing, but you believe that you're justified to do this, even though, of course, you're caught in the fog of your own emotional thinking, Harry, and you can't see clearly what it is that you're doing. But you ought to have the decency to relinquish your titles, you clearly don't want to be part of the institution, yet you're being a hypocrite because you're keeping the titles and you're utilising those titles for your own benefit, both of you. Of course, that is not going to happen. They might be stripped of them, and that's an option that remains. And as each day passes, that becomes more likely that that will occur. And if that were done, that would cause substantial wounding to Harry's wife to have the title removed. Of course, the royal family would have to be careful in that regard because, of course... What would happen? Well, since that would be wounding, that would amount to a threat to control. And therefore, Harry's wife would need to nullify that threat to control, and most likely would do so through pity play and triangulation, playing the race card, playing a mental health card, making out to show, look how spiteful and nasty they are. They can't even let us keep the titles. That's the control that they want to assert over us. Projection. So the use of these titles to utilise the facade, bolster the facade and sign these various deals whilst continuing to lash out at the very institution that bestowed them demonstrates the hypocrisy caused by emotional thinking and the hypocrisy generated by the narcissism. And it's quite right for people to suggest that you ought to relinquish the titles if you're going to continue in this way. 
But don't expect that to happen, because from Harry's wife's perspective, her narcissism will not allow that to occur, because of the sense of entitlement that exists, a lack of emotional empathy, and a lack of accountability. Join me in part three for further analysis of an initial news item appertaining to the world of Harry's wife.